I made reservations for the first time uh, myself. I've never been to a restaurant where you had to make reservations. Let me take this earring off. And it was a nice experience, okay? I was out of my element. I love music and stuff like that, but I'm more so like, you know, kind of like do the park type of jazz type of thing to kind of go listen or kind of been like home base for so long. I hadn't been out in like nine, ten years. The last time I think I've been out like that was when I was pregnant with my twins. My kid's dad took me out to eat and I went to go listen to some jazz at um, the casino. Okay, because, you know, he liked to, you know, he liked to gamble. <laughs> but anyways, so I hadn't been out in years. I've been like dedicating myself to my children, trying to learn how to be a homemaker, learning how to cook better, what the kids want, you know, just really engrossed in that. So I was like, I want to make reservations. And a lot of times when you're single, like I am at the age of 40, and I've been single for going on 10 years now, a lot of times people will say, well, I'm going to wait till I get married. I'm going to wait. I didn't want to wait. I wanted to go make myself some reservations. So while at the restaurant, I've never had like a three course or a five course meal. I didn't know really, you know, <laughs> I kind of just faked this. I make they made it, you know, I had a little jazz dress on, put a little makeup on. But there was a really nice waiter. And he was a little, you know, finicky, but he was really nice. He was good at what he did. I love a good hostess. You guys know my gift this helps. A lot of people would tell you it's other stuff, you know. Uh, that's another story for another day, but it really helps, literally. It's in the Bible. You look all the way down amongst the really big ones, you'll see mine is helps. And so I love being served. I love hospitality, so I always showed him appreciation. He was really meticulous. He was really exact. And then he was really hospitable, you know, in his own way, in his masculine way, and I appreciated that. So some of the food, I did not know how to eat. I thought I was eating it right. You know, see, that's the thing. When I'm a, I'm a chef at home, you know, a self-made chef. I kind of cook my stuff at home, and, you know, you know, I would like to, I like to look at recipes, and I make them. But when I really went out to, like, you know, an established restaurant, with the actual chef and how he wanted the food to be ate. His name is JJ Johnson. Um, it was like a South African, Caribbean type of delicious menu. Very delicious. Like they mix a lot of sweet and spicy together um, or savory and what you would consider somewhat like sweet undertones. It was a very, and also sour. They love sour and heat. So to taste a different taste, you know, just dancing around on my tongue was amazing. But some of the food I didn't know how to eat. And this waiter was so subtle that I appreciate his... Sometimes you could be subtle and lead somebody. You could correct them subtly. You don't have to always do it like, and you did this. Or you don't know how to... He would just kind of like with his hand signals and show me, no, this knife. He handed me a knife. There was this leek dish, and it was delicious, that the chef made with some type of brown mushroom sauce and pistachios on top of it. Just... A vegan or vegetarian is like heaven, right? I'm not vegan or vegetarian, but I really enjoy vegetables. You guys know that. And I can make some of those dishes. I was trying to eat it with a spoon. <laughs> so the man, he went really subtly and just handed me, like placed it, placed me a nice little knife. And it was a different type of knife. It wasn't a steak knife. And this is, I was, I started looking around the room and I saw, oh, these other people know how to eat this food. So the same thing, We I had a young bird, and it was with collard greens, which was amazing. Some type of salsa. They mixed, like, mango. That was delicious. Like, agrutan uh, Caribbean-style potatoes, which was, you could taste the cardamom in it, and you could taste the clove in it, but also with the cheese. So that would be, like, an odd taste for most Americans, you know, those two flavors together. It was really delicious. And then that, I was supposed to eat with the spoon. So now, is there a particular way you're supposed to eat the food? No. But there are ways where chefs will want you to eat the food or eat in a certain order. And I really do appreciate that waiter for giving me that subtle leadership, that subtle correction. And I took his correction because he didn't try to embarrass me while doing it. He was just like, or he was like, hand signals like, cut. Said, Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> now, my brother and his wife who went with me, they're, you know, they're a couple. They go out all the time, like all the time, so all sorts of weddings and stuff. You know, and when you have a two household income and a two household, like parent household, you know, both of y'all can kind of shoulder the, the weight and bounce off of each other. So if y'all both is, you know, you know, like we about to get out this house, you're going to find a way to get out the house. Whereas when, when it's with me, I'm by myself. So I, I do have, you know, a family member that will watch them, but I never really, my kids never spent the night in nobody's house other than like two trusted people and they never... 
I never had people keeping my kids so I can go out. So now they're older, you know, and they got their therapy going. They talking, they doing good. I'm like, I can go out for my 40th, right? So it was really nice. And it was really relaxing. So I can't do that often, but when I do, I think I'm going to go places like that. The next place I want to try is a um, fondue restaurant. You see, I'm plus size, okay? And I didn't lost 50 pounds, okay? But I still do like culinary cuisine. I think it's beautiful. It's culinary arts. You know, I love art, all things art. So I love it. I love, I just love it. I love, and I pick up on different things too. Like I like the way that that host just subtly guided me and was saying, telling me how to, this is how you eat the food. So it was just really nice, guys. I really enjoyed myself. Thank you so much for the birthday love. And I'm thinking about doing a vlog on when I want to go next. Um, I think they have a few venues around here where they have like live music. I really love that live music. And then I love good food. You know, I love laughter. And I like being around an older crowd. Even when I was younger, I used to like being around an older crowd or whatever. Um, so I'm thinking I might want to go somewhere a little bit more low key like that. I like to sit down and listen to a little music and eat. And if you want to get up and dance, you could dance a little bit, but we, you know, twerking has its place, but not everywhere. You understand? So sometimes it's okay to be grown and sexy sometimes or grown and quiet. I just love sitting there just shutting the hell up. Sometimes I just love being, because when you have kids or when you work in the job where you talk a lot, it's just like, I don't want to say nothing. So it was, <laughs> it was refreshing and it was rejuvenating. Um, I love the music. I love being there with live music. I never did that either. So F40, there's a first time for everything. I think that's the title of this. F40, there's a first time for everything. Never made reservations. I make food at home, but I never had like fancy food at a restaurant. Didn't know how to eat it. I had to follow the guidance of someone who subtly, you know, corrected me and helped me. So I really appreciate that. And it was, I listened. Okay. Now, this is another thing. On that note, okay, that's when I really came to talk to talk about submission, surrender. Vulnerability. Okay. How do you know you're supposed to be with someone? Not only do you go and ask God, your creator, Father God, hey, this is, you know, and wait for his guidance. As a woman, that man should receive your, watch what he does with your submission. You don't give submission totally, like right away. It's crazy. You show, you just watch what they do with your submission watch what they do with your surrender in certain areas because some areas you're going to have to kind of surrender like if you have a big mouth okay speaking from experience still a struggle with it uh <laughs> hey i'm i didn't move out the hood but some of the hood ain't moved out of me so if you have a little bit of a big mouth you might have to surrender that in certain areas watch what they do with that do they receive your surrender saying okay well she went on and calmed down and you know, stop cussing me out or stop hollering or stop, getting, you know, talking back and being nasty. And she trying to talk sweeter to me and trying to be quiet and trying to help me, you know, give me t a chance to think about what's going on if we have a conflict. Or do they get more power or more power hungry and bossy? That's important. Also, with your submission, submission. What is the mission in life? This is the mission in life. They want to be, they make tennis balls and rackets, okay? All right, they love physical fitness, things like that, tennis. You submit up underneath that. You're trying to learn how to play tennis and stuff like that. And do they critique you while you're trying to submit under their life mission? That ain't your man, sis. And last but not least, the most powerful one to me, anyways, if you have been <laughs> betrayed and, you know, hurt a lot, you know, the, the traumatized on top of just all it, you know, it's just terrible, uh, is vulnerability. A lot of people would crave they look at how you look on the outside or how you present yourself, how they think you present yourself. Because, you know, because some of it is perception on their end, right? Some of it is generalized. If you wear this, people going to think of this of you. But, you know, some people, they, their filters is through their, um, the vicissitudes of life they went through. You know what I mean? Even me. So that's why we got to ask God, help me see things right, right? So anyways, what do they do with your vulnerability? When you have been hurt and stuff a lot, it's hard for, to let people in, right? Trust, people call it trust, but it's also, I don't trust you with my vulnerabilities because that's my fears, my desires, my wants, my needs, and stuff like that. You can guess as much as you want to. What do they do if you release a little bit of your vulnerabilities to them? Do they become, do they try to use them to humiliate you or embarrass you? Because that's not who God got for you, sis. So always remember, surrender your surrender. 
some things just have to be surrendered. Like we surrender to God, you completely cease uh, resisting. Lord, I cease resistance of this big mouth. I cease resistance of this cussing. It's just, I haven't got better, but it's bad. I cease resisting you loving me. A lot of times we resist God loving us. Those whom he love, he corrects. I cease resisting your correction. This is, you know, the things you can start out with God in this area. And if you begin to show this to, you know, whoever you're dating or whoever, you know, there's levels of intimacy, right? And to me, you see. Watch what they do with it. What do they do with your surrender? What do they do with your submission? They crave it. What do they do with it? And what do they do with your vulnerabilities? Why do they want to know them so much? Like, why do they want to know your weak areas or what make you scared? You know, do they want to know them so they can help you and protect you? Because that rises up that masculinity in them. And it makes them feel powerful, which is completely natural and beautiful. It's beautiful masculinity. Or do they want to know your vulnerabilities so they can humiliate and embarrass you and make fun of you or act like they're giving your vulnerabilities to strengthen another woman in your face? It's called playing in your face. All of that stuff is completely psychological abuse. It's emotional abuse. And it's just not good. So how did these two stories correlate? I noticed that I responded to the subtle correction of that man that helped me to keep my dignity but still corrected me. And I appreciate that. You guys have a wonderful day. It's the first time for everything. This is first of 40. And I'm grateful for 40. Thank you, God. Only you. Peace.